greetings and good morning to everyone. Here we are again, starting off. Uh, this will be YouTube number two lecture in ME 3228, covering deflections again. And we'll be going over the general principles, definitions, and then some methods of analyzing beam deflections and this is this is uh, whiteboard number three on this topic there'll be another one whiteboard number four coming up here shortly and um, let's see if I can get this timer going again but uh, I left off last time the uh, failed to remember to uh, move the board up here and uh, so there were some items cut off, and these were the items that were cut off. There were just an explanation I was talking about, you know, from that uh, feeler gauge, what, what these dimensions actually look like. And uh, so I designate them as engineering, the way we talk, um, as 0 .005 is what we call five thousandths of an inch. And I showed that to you on the uh, feeler gauge, just how thin that actually is. And then 0 0.05 would be 50, called 50 thousandths of an inch. All right. And then, uh, which is going to be kind of getting close to a sixteenth. Uh, and then, um, and then 500 thousandths, uh, that's, of course, that would be half an inch, basically. But we talk in, as engineers when d discussing dimensions or, or values, uh, especially uh, on drawings, et cetera. We, we talk in thousands of an inch here. So this is the proper protocol for that. The other thing was I was talking about, you know, metrology studies about measuring things because when we measure deflections, they're very usually very, very small, usually less than an inch. Uh, so they're very small. And there are different ways to measure that, of course, and I showed you some of those uh, instruments. Uh, but metrology basically is just a scientific study of measurement. Uh, it's a big, 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 big field of study. But the scientific study of measurement is what we call metrology. Okay. So now let's talk about uh, some general uh, topics here or definitions, basically, when we're talking about deflections. And one of the first ones... Uh, deflections uh, in any kind of an equation that you're going to be working with, we're going to look at some equations here later, uh, are denoted by a variable, and uh, the variable usually is y, uh, or sometimes, depending on what table you're looking at, it could be a delta, all right? And they are the change, the actual change in the position of that neutral axis of that beam from its unloaded condition to the final loaded condition uh, measured perpendicular to the original neutral axis, uh, whatever that cross section might be. Now I've got some, uh, in a minute, I've got some actual diagrams of what that looks like, uh, what these, what these uh, deflection curves might look like, and I'll show those to you here in just a moment. Uh, okay, and also the upward deflections are, would be a positive and a downward deflections would be negative. So uh, essentially what we're looking at, of course, if, if it was a normally loaded with a vertically loaded down load, usually the deflections are, you know, going to be negative, but not always. They could be, if they're overhanging or something, they could be coming up on the other side. And again, I'll show you some examples here in a minute. But normally the upward deflections were referred to as positive and downward deflections denoted as negative. Okay, and the variable x uh, is used to denote the horizontal position on the beam and is usually measured from one of the supports usually from the left the from the left reaction and again I'll show that to you when we start looking at some of these tables here and and diagrams but x denotes a linear measurement and usually taken from that left reaction on the beam uh, the, now here's some criteria some some strength of materials criteria here deflections are proportional to the load applied to the beam they are directly proportional to the load applied to the beam. Uh, but deflections are inversely proportional to the stiffness of a beam. Now, when we refer to stiffness, there are two ways to denote stiffness. Uh, there are the stiffness associated with material stiffness, which is E, the modulus of uh, elasticity. 
There's also I, which is the shape stiffness or the moment of inertia. So there's two stiffness values. You see, we've got a property, material property stiffness value denoted by E, and then I, which is the basic just geometry relationship uh, reference to the cross section would refer to as the shape stiffness. But the product of these, E and I, is what's referred to, generally speaking, as the overall beam stiffness. And since it is inversely proportional to the beam stiffness deflection, you will always see E and I in the denominator of all of these equations that we're going to be using the formula method to solve for deflection here. But all these equations, you will always see E and I in the denominator because of that, because of it's inversely proportional. Now, when, when looking overall at deflections, there are four diagrams that are usually used to describe graphically uh, the condition of a beam uh, with any kind of a given loading uh, situation. Uh, and you're familiar with the first three easily. Uh, there are the load diagram. Uh, that is just the initial diagram when you're doing a V&M or a shear moment diagram. And then from the load diagram, uh, which is just showing the loads and the reactions, then we have, we, we, we do a shear diagram from that, positive and negative shear. Then we do a moment diagram from the shear diagram uh, that relates to that. And then the last one is the deflection diagram. Now that's uh, let, me, let me show you. The deflection diagram shows the shape of the deflected beam. Uh, basically, it's a plot of that neutral axis of the beam relative to its initial position. And the, the amount of deflection will be, noted, be, be denoted by uh, Y or, again, delta. You'll see Y max or Y wherever you want to do along the beam. Now here is here is a um, diagram showing some of these some of these deflections. Now I put I highlighted here in orange both the loads and the reactions. So this is a simply supported beam with two equal loads applied. And in green I've designated what the actual deflection curve would look like. So the deflection curve would look like this in green. Uh, no surprise, this is obviously a negative, and Y max would be dead center right here. So you'd, you'd, you could say Y max is mid span of this particular scenario. Over here, uh, sort of is very similar, but we have a concentrated load more towards the right hand side. Uh, we still have this basic negative deflection down here, but the Y may have shifted over just slightly uh, to the right. Now, here's an interesting one, as I told you. Uh, here is an overhang uh, where we have uh, a, a reaction here, could be the wall, uh, and then we have another support reaction here, and the weight is at the very end. So the, the beam curve actually looks more like this. It's positive on one side and then starts to shift down and turn negative over here, and Y max apparently looks like it's going to be at the very far end on the right here. This Y max would be denoted from here to here. So you can see how these all kind of look and, and change. Now the one that obviously you're going to be doing in your lab, I believe, is going to be a cantilevered beam similar to something like this. So all the maximum Y, the maximum deflection, uh, would be at the very end of this particular beam looking like that. Okay? That kind of gives you an idea, representation, of what some of these deflection curves actually look like predicated on the load and the reactions types there. Okay. So... Uh, let's now look at um, methods for analyzing beam deflections and along with that some beam uh, diagrams and formulas. So let me carefully remove this from the table. All right, and then we'll bring into the picture, this will be a whiteboard uh, actually number four uh, represented here. And let me make sure that's all lined up here so you can see everything. All right, yeah, I think that pretty much lines it up. You can see everything there. Okay, so now we're going to look at some methods of analyzing beam deflections. And there's many ways to do this. But as engineers, you know, we're always looking for the most efficient way to do something, of course. And uh, the most prescribed method, the most common method, uh, 
And so essentially in that world, there are two basic methods for calculating deflections. Although actually there's four. Uh, the two we're going to mention uh, specifically are number one, the formula method. Then there's something known as the moment area method. And then even farther beyond that, uh, there are two others, uh, the what we call the superposition method and also something called the successive integration method. But I tell you from a practicing engineering standpoint, uh, the lion's share of time or the majority of time when you're, when you're tasked with trying to determine deflection on a particular beam or apparatus or, or whatever, some of the things we talked about in the first video, uh, you will more than likely be using the formula method, all right? Um, and it's the most commonly used method, is referred to as the formula method. It's widely used when calculating deflection of any part along the length of a beam. And so that could either be the, the y, the maximum here, um, y max, or it could be a specific location on something. So the maximum deflection is referred to again as Y max or delta max. All right. Uh, and the location of the maximum deflection, you can also determine that. So from this formula method, you can, you can the deflection of any point along the length of the beam, you can find that. Again, Y x or delta x. You can also find the maximum deflection, uh, which would be Y max or delta x. Um, or delta should be delta max, sorry. That should be delta max, not delta x. That's what confused me. Okay. And, uh, and then the location. So those are three things you can find, and those are the three things you're usually trying to find uh, when looking at deflection on different types of structures, uh, machines, frames, whatever it might be. Okay, so the the deflection well I got spelling is now missing here the deflection formulas are valid only only for cases where the cross sectional uh, where the cross section of the beam is uniform for its entire length and also uh, usually it's for basically static applied loads that we're looking at there are some uh, you can use that that are moving, but uh, we're going to concentrate on a static, statically loaded. Okay. But again, uh, they're valid only for cases where that cross section, whatever that beam is, is is constant, is the same all the way from one end to the other. <clears throat> okay. So formula methods utilizes tables. And these tables have diagrams and formulas. Now, the formulas actually have been derived uh, from either the moment area method that I talked about earlier or the successive integration method. So they use those two methods to put into a very useful table of these, of these uh, uh, diagrams and formulas. And I will show you these here in a minute, but let's go over the the basics for it. The, the beam diagrams and formula tables are available within a wide, wide variety of engineering resources. Uh, however, uh, the most standard of these comes from uh, an organization known as the American Institute of Steel Construction, or AISC. <clears throat> and they have a manual that looks like this. All right. And uh, the Manual of Steel Construction slash Allowable Stress Design Manual, which again looks exactly like this. All right, now this happens to be the ninth edition. I don't know what edition they're up to now, uh, but and and it's a quite involved. But I'm telling you, words of wisdom here, and that is that if you find yourself in your career. Uh, doing a lot of steel, not necessarily steel construction, but steel design using standard, and most of you will be using standard structural shapes. Uh, this manual is something you will be using almost on a daily basis, depending on how much you're involved in it. But it is an extremely, extremely good resource. It's available online, of course, as a hard copy. You can get it online, I'm sure, 
other ways uh, <clears throat> through AISC. Uh, but again, you're looking for the allowable stress design. Now, let me just show, go through this thing right quick with you uh, before we actually start looking at problems. But they have, they have, uh, let's see. Well, I think I have a better, I don't have to show this book. Uh, let me, let me, I've got some copies here I can utilize. All right, so what they've got are tables. And first they start off with, with a page like this and they have and this is for all structural shapes I just chose uh, structural tubing square and rectangular but they have these tables uh, and they have them for wide flange angles channels what have you uh, but at any rate this gives you uh, dimensional properties all right dimensional properties uh, and then they also they give dimensions and the properties of these now this is this is a square tubing and a rectangular tubing. Now notice on a square tubing these properties, these these strength and material type properties, they don't change. Now this is strictly based upon geometry. All right. Again, this is a geometric property. The I, of course, is a moment of inertia. The S is something referred to as a section modulus. Section modulus, and I'll talk to more about that probably in the next in the next video. Uh, because this, when you're designing a beam for any application, you usually are trying to find the required S. And I'll talk about what that section module is and how we get how we how we derive that from a from another formula. And I'll do that probably in the next uh, video. But eyes, of course, are the moment inertias, and, and what are they? They're very specific to orientation. In other words, you don't really see it on the on the on a square because it's the same on all the sides. Um, but again, this is that cross-sectional, uh, um, the, the shape stiffness factor, I. So you can look through here and, and just look at these numbers, and you can see as you get from a smaller to a larger, these I's are increasing, increasing, okay? Uh, which means it's more and more, be more resistant to bending, all right, or stiffer. Now, when you get over here to the, to the rectangular side of the business, uh, you'll see that they have they've broken these properties into either xx axis or yy axis. Nine times out of the ten, most of the times we're looking at an orientation along this xx axis, which gives the a more vertical approach here. All right, and a better resistance to bending with the vertical side being up, uh, because you know if you, if you go back to calculating eyes just for pure rectangles, is bh cubed over twelve, so the height being cubed is going to make a big difference. So you can notice then that the XXI for this first one, which is a 20 by 12, which is rather large, uh, is all the way up to uh, 1,650 inches to the fourth. Now, if you turn it sideways, uh, it's severely, severely reduced down to 750. All right. So a little greater than twice is large uh, going from a vertical or XX approach as opposed to YY, which would be laying it horizontal. So you can see these change, all right? And, and, and all of the uh, properties that you'll see will usually, unless it's symmetrical, like a, like a round or like a square, you will have both XX and YY properties, okay? So that's where we're getting these values because these I's, again, are going to be in the equations uh, for deflection, all right? And so we're going to look at those equations. But this is where you get the information again, and all this comes from. And there's the timer. I got a couple more minutes, maybe. Uh, but all of these tables come from this book. All right, from this manual. All right. So let me then show you before we get into this. Uh, this this is a typical beam diagram and formulas. Now again, these are inside this book. Um, and I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you a copy out of this book uh, that will help you, I think, on your lab, okay? I'm going to send you this copy that shows cantilever beams, uh, and you can get the information from that. Uh, and I'm also going to send you this beam diagram and formula, you know, what all those letters mean. Uh, you will have this as well to look at so you can determine when you're looking at those equations what it what means what now just to show you the depth of this you say well how can this cover all the possibilities well 
it can't necessarily cover all the possibilities, but I tell you what, for the lion's share of things you're going to be faced with, it's going to have it covered here. Okay, so for instance, uh, I believe it starts off with one, uh, and you just keep thumbing through here. Here's all the different types of potential beams and loading conditions and reactions. So now we're up to 24. Uh, let's see. Continue to turn the page here if I can get it to turn. Uh, 29. All the way up to 33 different potentials. And again, these are all very static lo loaded conditions. Then they even have some uh, for continuous beams, three equal spans. So you can see they've they've covered. This is this is really a working man's engineering reference. Okay, a working engineer's practicing reference. And uh, there's no sense in trying to go back and then reinvent the wheel and start looking at derivations and stuff when all this is laid out for you perfectly to use. Again, they want you to be efficient when you're problem solving, and this is what they use to make it more efficient when you're designing uh, structural uh, applications from standard material shapes, standard structural steel shapes. So uh, I'm really kind of running out of time, but just this very simple one, you can just see what these look like. But I want you to notice right quick, we'll go through these in detail on the next, on the next uh, video. But notice, here's that delta max, all right? And obviously, obviously you don't see the, the, the diagram here, but it's obviously going to be down right here. It's going to have a, a ne big negative right in the middle here. That's where maximum deflection uh, is going to take place. And of course it says here at the point of load. So it's right in the middle. So that's where it's going to occur. Here is the equation if you look at it. All right. PL cubed over 48 times EI. Now here's that EI. Again, it's in the denominator. All right. That's that inverse proportionality. Of, of the deflection to this beam stiffness, all right? So P is here is the concentrated load. L is just the overall length. Now what you have to remember is you have to keep your units straight. All right, you have to keep your units straight and normally they're gonna be in US customary units would be in inches here, okay? Uh, but again, if you look down here to this other one, the same thing, here is, here is, uh, here is delta max when this condition is going. Again, here's the equation. But again, EI is in denominator, EI is in denominator, denominator, denominator. So again, that shows that uh, inverse proportionality of that uh, deflection to, um, to the uh, load. So at any rate, uh, we will go through this and I'm going to go over uh, a sample problem with you and uh, then we'll continue on. So I hope to have that hopefully done maybe today or tomorrow. And I will keep you posted as far as the updates go vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis the uh, email. And so um, good luck, and we'll keep, keep on going. And one quick little announcement. Uh, I know in one of these classes, and because I can't see you, I don't remember names, but I'm trying to find the student, the gentleman, who is working at Discount Hire. So if he wouldn't mind, email me, and I would appreciate it. Okay, until next time, we'll see you then.